Welcome to Moonscapes. It is Saturday night, uh, March the 23rd, 2013, and uh, right now we've got a fairly clear sky. I've been sitting out here for the last 45 minutes or so playing with a bunch of clouds. I've been uh, covering up the moon on and off, and right now we've got a fairly good uh, clear sky going, so I figured I'd give this a shot and Hopefully, don't get another batch of clouds start coming in to cover things up. Uh, got a fairly good moon to work with tonight. A couple of things I'd like to discuss. Um, I just put a video up about uh, three nights ago, I believe on the 20th of March, and I used a uh, uh, small refractor I have an Orion 4.7 inch um, f8.3 refractor. Uh, tonight, I'm back to my sky watcher, 127 millimeter. Uh, five inch sky watcher max Sudoff Cassegrain telescope um, this telescope gives me a, a little more oomph there's a it's a, an f15 um, and the combination of eyepieces and barrel lenses I'm using tonight is the same that I used in the refractor as you can see we've got a windy night going here tonight that buffeting out there is from the a very very strong wind we get now and then um, I, I've got uh, uh, I've got a fair amount of zoom. Right now we're zoomed in on Tycho, as you can see, that uh, bright crater near this, just off center there where the central peak is Tycho. As I was saying, uh, with this uh, Skywatcher scope tonight, uh, I'm using a, a 21 millimeter eyepiece, which seems to be the best of the lot for me. It gives me a lot of a lot of flexibility, a lot of zoom in and out, um, and, and I'm using it with that new two inch Barlow I have. Uh, so it gives me a little, a little bit of power uh, and good flexibility in zoom. Um, I want to work my way down. Uh, now another problem we're going to have tonight is I'm back in, in that shed at my son's house. Uh, the other night I was uh, working in my uh, uh, back parking lot in my car um, with all my equipment set outside and the wires run into the car and for the telescope control and the computer and... Uh, I was working inside the car, and uh, uh, I had the Orion mount, and the Orion mount, uh, the Atlas EQG, is a much easier mount to work with, and I'm back now with the Skyview Pro, which as you're going to see tonight, is going to give me more problems in control. It doesn't uh, respond nearly as well, and again, as I said, we're, we're dealing with some pretty strong buffeting winds now and then. Uh, right now, we're moving down... Uh, down uh, from the south back to the northern side of the moon, um, picking up some. Uh, actually, now we're over. Uh, I want to get down uh, some features I want to discuss down here in the northern part of the moon. Uh, one one feature uh, I find very interesting historically, and that's why I'm trying to get to it now. And as you can see already, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. Uh, um, this mount, uh, it's very slow responding, and once I do get it going in one direction, it's tough to get it to go back the other way. Um, okay, I've got the movement I want going up, but I'm going to need to stop it here in a second, and it'll give me a hard time. There's the crater Plato, uh, the nice uh, dark floored crater there, um, flat floored, beautiful crater. Uh, Actually, if I can get this to stop for a second, we can stop there for a second. Take a look at that zoomed in. Uh, as you can see, when I want to try to stop it, I can't. It takes me some time. Uh, I'm still trying to stop it, and it's running away from me. Uh, there we go. I think I've got it, and I can bring it back towards the center a little bit. Um, you can zoom in a little bit on here and take a look at the, the floor of crater. Plato. Uh, let me get the... My mouse going here. There we go. So we got some pretty good zooming power. Uh, you can see the sun angle is very high in Plato tonight. There's no interior shadows off the walls. Um, so the sun angle is much higher there tonight. And it's not showing an awful lot of detail. So let's move on to uh, where I was trying to get to. And here it's coming up now. Uh, sinus Iridium. It's that U-shaped feature. Let me, as I'm moving in, let me back out a little bit. Um, OK. 
Okay, let's get this centered up a little bit. See, like, okay, I've got it stopped pretty good there. See, that's a large C-shaped uh, object in there uh, wrapping around that flat floor. Um, that's sinus iridium. Um, it, it's the name of the, the large structure. But uh, the, uh, the ends of the C's have got uh, uh, some funny names. Uh, one is promontory Laplace. That's the upper one. And the bottom part of the sea, the backward sea, uh, facing out to the middle of the mar, is Promontory Herculides. Um, that one there, it, it, it's interesting historically because I don't know if you can see it, but the human eye is pretty good at, at making um, uh, making up pictures or, or uh, uh, symmetrical objects uh, out of things. Uh, I know I did a lot of variable star work in my day, and uh, you used to have to identify star fields and the variable star within that star field. And so uh, the mind is very good at making up like uh, house-shaped structures or rectangles or triangles, and you'd be able to find your, um, your variable star that way. Well, the bottom part of that sea, a promontory uh, Hercules, uh, in historical times, was said to represent the head of a woman. And I don't know if you can identify it, but I'm going to zoom in. See, it's coming up right in the center of the field right now. It's that object that's in the center. Um, notice the top part of that end has got a white uh, look to it, and there's a, a, a looks like a pointed nose. That's supposedly the woman's face, and she would be looking up towards the top of the field. And then back behind her, and if I adjust the contrast a little bit, is, uh, uh, that might be a little too much, I'm not sure. Uh, there, there's the, that mountainous region, uh, it, it takes on um, the look of um, uh, flowing hair. Uh, there, 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 if I over accentuate the color a little bit. There, you can see the, it looks like a woman's chin and nose looking straight up, and then uh, that mountainous range in back of her is supposedly her flowing hair. Uh, I've seen some real nice artwork from the 1700s uh, where lunar maps were drawn and that was that was enhanced greatly and uh, they're really pretty interesting look looking. I mean there's nothing, uh, nothing scientific there. It was all basically just art as part of the map but I found it pretty interesting. Um, I want to move on. Uh, let me back out a little bit. Um, and I'm going to get down near the Terminator. Let me see. We've got to get up this way. And we're going to look at some features. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, the first one coming up right now. And I've got to stop it as it's near the center. Is our old friend uh, Aristarchus. Um, and give me a second here. I've got the, the control set on auto right now. And we've got, we're kind of kind of blowing the, uh, uh, the feature away a little bit. Let me just uh, play with these intensities a little bit. Drop that color down. It's a little bit overpowering. Um, the top crater there with a real bright floor or, or wall uh, facing towards the 5 o'clock position is Aristarchus. Uh, the crater directly below that is Herodotus. And then notice to the right of that there's a, uh, a channel. Uh, let's see, we got some zoom left, so let's use it. Um, let's come in a little bit, and I'll raise it up, get it near the center. Um, and see if I can stop it. No, oh, that's too far. Let's bring it back up, let it get to the center, and stop it. Uh, right about there, if I can stop it. Now, there. Um, that channel there, th that is uh, Schroeder's Valley. Uh, that area of the moon. Uh, it was said back in the 1960s to be one of the areas where um, uh, color events would take place. There'd be mists or uh, gas releases they thought from that area, and it turns out most of that is nothing more than just the uh, uh, the sun throw uh, as as the sun gets higher in the sky as we approach full moon, changing the brightness on the floor. But a lot of people claim that there there were outgassings like from the volcano volcano from that area. Uh, it was one of the more active areas of the moon. Um, I'm going to come up now to the object that I had spoke about the other night uh, and is, is one of the more 
historically interesting areas of the moon. That crater, which is just about dead center right now. Okay, I want to bring it up a little farther so I don't lose it. And then see if I can hold it. Okay, it's almost dead center right now. That is uh, Marius. It's in the Mar Marius Hills. I'm going to zoom in on it. And unfortunately, as we zoom in tonight, um, we lose uh, some of the scene uh, because the sky, it, we've got, really got a bad uh, scene situation where it just shimmers badly. But notice in that area, there's those little humps, more up to the uh, upper right of that crater. Um, there seems to be like these little bumps uh, and little humps. and uh, th Those were actually volcanic uh, cinder cones. Uh, and this was the area that was claimed back in the early 1800s and even back in, in, in a Johann Schroeder's day in, in the late 1700s where they suspected lunar cities. Uh, they were called uh, the great white cities of the moon. Um, and it was part of that whole um, issue of, of supposed lunar inhabitants back in uh, the very early 1800s. And this is one of those areas that was uh, uh, suspected of being uh, a city. Uh, now I'm going to drop down the zoom a little bit because of the scene is so bad. There, those, uh, those. Uh, notice uh, up near one o'clock from that uh, crater. Now, notice those uh, uh, cinder cones and humps show up more. Now, if that's what they were looking at and claiming those were structures and buildings, uh, that could be it. That, that's the only thing I see here. Uh, that would indicate that there's anything unusual here. Uh, of course, it turned out to be uh, nothing, uh, nothing more than a, a, a cinder cones. Um, this site actually uh, was to be a, a landing site for uh, uh, one of the Apollo missions, uh, but uh, the Apollo program was uh, canceled after Apollo 17. And I think they had originally funded through Apollo 20, so they had Apollo 18, 19, and 20, which were canceled. And one of those uh, uh, Apollo missions was to go to this area uh, to study up, up close, but of course it never took place. Notice also very interesting in this area is uh, that wrinkle ridge that runs out of that crater from the 6 o'clock position, and then runs right along the Terminator going over towards uh, uh, 8 o'clock position. Uh, so, so there's some interesting stuff there, which um, uh, you know, people might uh, really lose their minds all over and say, yeah, there is a city there, but uh, there really isn't. And boy, look at that wind whip now. We've got a real jumping image there. Uh, as you can see, what's, it's actually being blown into the field. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, up above there, that's the crater Kepler. And look at, look at the uh, ejecta field around that. In fact, let me drop down uh, and put on the uh, put on auto. Does that help? No, not too much. Let me um, want to try to accentuate that. Uh, uh, that's a little better. There, there you can see that ejector pattern around uh, Kepler. Uh, that that always intrigued me. Um, uh, it's a real, real pretty ejector pattern. Notice also the small, right, actually almost dead center now, those small hills and uh, little mountain ridge tops there. Uh, that's always interesting to me. It's a beautiful area. Uh, color tonight is interesting. Uh, it's not overpowering. Um, I've, got a, I've got a color set right around 20%. Uh, and notice if I push it high. See, again, that, that reddish color that comes in the center. Again, I am totally convinced that is coming from the central obstruction from uh, the telescope, the, the uh, uh, Max Sudoff Cassegrain telescope with a central obstruction. Uh, and then that blue around the edge. Now, if you notice, if you drop it back down and get that center red down to a more normal look, you can leave it there and there's a little color in the moon. And it accentuates whatever little color there is there and it gives it a much more natural look. Uh, I know there's this rage going on with these webcams about the moon and there's all this color and NASA's lying to us. Well, no, NASA's not lying to us. Uh, the, the moon is really, really a dull gray um, and with very little color. There is some color, not totally no color. 
and, and these webcams, you've got to remember, they were never designed to do astronomy. They were designed for a totally different purpose. And so they're overblowing the color on the moon. Uh, I'm not saying that there isn't any color at all, but there is some, and what's there, these cameras are really pumping up. And I believe that's what's causing all this big fuss about uh, color on the moon. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's zoom back down out a little bit, and I want to go along to the next feature um, that I wanted to look at tonight and discuss a little bit. Um, let me move that over a little bit. Like I say, this mount is just very difficult to work with after using my uh, nice Atlas mount a couple nights ago. Okay, almost dead center, uh, we'll leave it zoomed out for now, is that flat mar, uh, round, small mar, that's mar humorum. Um, and the, the crater uh, just off center over going towards 3 o'clock, fairly large crater, is the crater Cassendi. And, uh, and my son is right here next to me with my computer for the Atlas. Jim, can you get uh, you in that area anywhere? Let's see, where are you? There's Mary Humorum right there. Okay, and you got Cassendi? Yeah, you got Cassendi. That's okay. Cassendi P is one of the small craters. Cassendi, what's it got for miles there? It's 67. Okay, Cassendi, 67 miles in diameter. Uh, it's a fairly large crater. And let's zoom in on that. And I've got to move it over. Uh, let's move it so we can, let's center that a little up. It's an interesting, an interesting crater. Um, Boy, this mount just is really difficult to work with. I want to get that a little more centered, but I don't want it to run away because once it starts running, it won't stop. Right about there is good if I can hold it. Uh, there, okay, well, that's about as good as I'm going to.